You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. C- Catch 22 Radio Show on 92kills.com. We are back. Um, it's Catch 22 Man Cave style. We got Brian in the building. We got Ray in the building. And we have another special guest in the building, Mr. Smurf Zilla. Hey. <laughs> hey, what it is, H Time, man? Shout out to Case 22 Radio, man. That's what I'm talking about. Smurfs man. in the Bang Game, we're in the building, man. Bang Game. Ooh. Uh, that made me nervous a little bit. I cracked my wife. I was uh, nervous, man. Don't <laughs> be nervous, man. Black, it means it stands for Blacks Ain't Niggas Get Guap and Never Give Up, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so it's, it was an acronym. Look, look, thank you. You know what I mean? Look, I, uh, I, you know, I've been removed from society a long time, so you know, I'm, I'm over there with the white folks. So when yeah, y'all hear bang, bang, bang gang, I, just, I was like, bro, so I want my vest today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So give give, give people a, a little bio of who Smurfzilla is. Hey, man. Well, uh, I'm an artist, man. I uh, come from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, you know, the, I got a gift from God, and I've been using it. You know what I'm saying? It's working for me, man. I, uh, I come from the streets, man, but I left that in the past, man. I just, you know, do this music shit, man, and speak my pain and my life story through this music instead of actually going and do it now, you know? Yeah. What That's side of the city you from, man? I'm from the east side of Clint Polk, but I grew up in my city. Oh, I grew up in my city. So I the most city, that's where all my supporters is, man. It's my second home, but it's like my last home. That's real. All right, so since you you say you want, you have like switched up like I guess life paths or career paths, like what do you feel? How do you feel like the support has been in the transition in life? Well, I just see God's work, you know what I'm saying, and I also see the devil's work too, you know what I'm saying. But you know, God, you know, overcome, you know, all that overpower the devil at any time or. Yeah, anybody out there trying to change their life, one thing I'm gonna tell them is that man, you gotta keep on doing it. Once the devil see you doing it, he's gonna take you harder than he would, so you gotta be strong. Definitely. Okay. You preaching on Sunday. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> I, mean, I was I was, I was like, all right, he's gonna tell me something powerful. <laughs> see, y'all saw that bang gang, y'all ain't see this coming. No, yeah. I did. I did. I did. Mm-hmm. They always shock you, you know what I mean? The ones that be nervous would be like, yeah, God. I was like, I just sat next to somebody. I was like, you know what's crazy? When uh, when the natural came and sat down, he said, "Man, I just got out the pen. I did about uh, I think he said ten or fifteen years." He said twenty straight. Yeah, I said, "Oh, yeah. day yeah. for day." And the very next thing he said was blessings and wisdom that we all left up out of there with. Yeah, no, look no, at you judging books by covers. That's true. Um, so based on I guess like your the, the way that you that you go you go by life, how does your music portray like your your day to day life now? Actually, if you listen to the music, man, you my music can tell you a lot about the person I used to be. Mm-hmm. And like I tell, I told my niece the other day, she asked me, she said, Uncle, why your song so violent? I said, because that's how I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? But don't do as I do or say, you know, do as you do. Do be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? I use my music like I say, man. It's not nothing I do no more, you know what I'm saying, or nothing like that. But it's, if I get pissed off, I go right, man, instead of going out there and getting in trouble. So sometimes my music may say I'm a bad guy, but I'm really not no bad guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just the way I put my thoughts into, you know, the paper and the pen, man. So do you think that when you put your, your thoughts into that paper and pen, that, that might have to come back to you? You might have to go back to that person, somebody try you, or listen to this music sometime, make you feel like, I want to see if he really about it. Yeah, see, that's something I already understand that I'm going to have to go through, you know. So I'm mentally prepared for that, but, uh, you know, I know I got God with me, you know what I'm saying? So I don't be tripping, bro. Like, I just I just go with the pace. I already know what it is. Sometimes you have to watch what you say, too, in the music because power the tune. Mm-hmm. I see some of them things happening, you know, you know how they go. Yeah. I say I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I say I'm ready. Boy. That's all good, man. Because we was just talking about Kodak having to live a certain kind of lifestyle. Right due, to, due to the stuff he says in his song. Right. He can't be caught lacking, if you will. Right. So do you put yourself in that same boat as to where you won't well, be caught lacking? I, I don't I don't I don't really I try to mind my own business, bro. I try not to speak on other people's business, you know, like I don't agree with like with the things that Kodak said, but at the same time, you know, like he just said what other niggas was thinking. You know what I'm saying? The lady beautiful, it was just timing. He said it like maybe like a week too early. Like the man had just passed away, haven't even had a funeral service, and you talking about fucking this gal or whatever you say. Hold on, sir. Just before we go any further, there's no profanity. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. Because <laughs> you was finna get I apologize, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, you good. But I felt the same thing. I said the same thing about Kodak. I, we all felt it. Just, we just, I guess it wasn't the right time to say yeah, it. Yeah, no, I mean right. it was he was kind of the conversation with his partner. You know what I mean? Like, I we would have had that same kind it just wouldn't have been recorded. That's real. You know what I mean? Um, so, so is there any rappers 
you know, that you, whether major or, or local, that you would like to work with that you haven't had a chance to work with? Oh, man, I want to work with uh, T.I. I, I want to work with uh, Jada Kiss. I want to work with Cassidy. And, uh, man, and in Houston, I want to work with any artists that's out here working. You know, because okay. that's like my favorite, you know, artists and rappers that I came up listening to, so I would still love to do something with them. For sure. So you, you would still want to do a record with Cassidy? Yeah, that's my favorite rapper, man. That's your favorite rapper? My favorite rapper, dog. From battle uh, rap or from music? Bro? That's what I'm trying to figure see, out. See, he's my favorite rapper. See, T.I. my favorite artist. Mm -hmm. so, like, T.I. my favorite artist. Cassidy, Cassidy I'm not going to say he don't make great songs, but, you know, like, he, you know, his, his specialty is battle rap and, you know, bars. And, you know, I just like T.I. because he got a story behind his knee, you know, the, uh, the hook, the, the verses back up to the hook, you know, that type of stuff. They looked at me weird when I said T.I. was my favorite artist. Well, I mean, the reason why he's my favorite artist, is, is, I look at his lifestyle. I mean, I don't know if it's, it's, it's real, but the, the persona he give us and what he show us, like with the family life and all that type of stuff, that's what. That, 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 yeah, that's, that's what I'm mad at too, but I just ain't, I'm, I'm still on ignorant music, bro. I still ain't grown up. Right so on. I think that's my problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm on like the little babies, like all the stuff the kids listen to, I'm right there with them. I'm just as ignorant, bro. Right I just on. Say, much, uh, musically, I haven't matured, but I'm yeah. on the family life, but I, I listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, sure. musically he's a senior in high school, bro. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I can dig it. I'm proud of you. I know what it is, bro. That's, ah, that's true. Yeah, man. All right, so if if you had to name, I guess, your top five artists of all time, you know what I mean? No particular order, just your top five. Who would you say? I'm going to say, uh, of course, Tupac, Biggie, Cassidy, T.I., Jada Kiss, and Ludacris. I'm a, I would take... I would, I, you you know, just got him excited bro, for no bro, reason. That's that? sick. <laughs> <laughs> he just got excited for no reason. Yeah, I mean, I like Ludacris a little better than Biggie, but you know, when I got older, Ludacris better than who? Biggie. Biggie. I mean, but you gotta hear me out though. No, no. But you gotta hear me out. See, I was a Tupac fan coming up because that's all my uncles used to listen to. So exactly. I ain't never give Biggie no no chance until I got older. And I was like, man, he was on Pac ass. So that's why I had to mention him. But you know, if it was my top five, it would be without Biggie. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. My only, my only, my only battle about the Biggie situation was that all of that was freestyle. So I think that if Biggie would have put his pen to some paper, you, it probably would have been untouchable. The things that Biggie was saying, I don't, I don't think it would have been untouchable. Amazing. Some people can't, can't write. He's still like untouchable right now with the C C. You know, <laughs> but Luda mean, was Luda killer with that pen. So, like, so look, I, this I, the I, thing, I just, like, like Snoop said, like I didn't know how to write, like going into music, like. Dr. Dre had to show me what a 16 was, what a 32 was. Like I just went in there and just wrote, boom, 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 boom. So him writing, it was it was more of Puff producing. Like, hey, no, cut it off right here, boom. All right, add it over here. Like Puff produced a lot of it, but I don't feel like like some people just can't write. Yeah, I I, I just I guess I respect Biggie. That's why I never compare Biggie and Pac just for that reason. Yeah, because Pac had way more so hits. That's it why. Forward too. I, I look, before we even argue that fact. You gotta think about it, right? It's 2019. You what? How far removed are we finna be from people even putting Pac and Biggie on this list anymore? We're not that far, because we still putting them on the list, and it's 23 years ago. They died 23 years ago. Okay. I was seven when they died. Okay. But I still think that the, the, the younger generation is finna wipe that out. So no, 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 look, 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 look. Go ahead. Right, right, right now, like my nephew is about to be a senior in high school, he still says Pac is top five. Yeah, because people say that. He got you, that. though. He got, huh? you, he got you around. But he that's what I'm saying. He listens to it. So if, as long as, like, it's like, it's almost like like the Osley Brothers at, or, or Al Green. Like, they made mu music 40 and 50 years ago, but we still know them songs. Yeah. Because our, our culture let it live on. It's certain people who, whose music is never going to die. You know what I mean? Like, Mike is never going to die. Prince is never going to die. So, you so know what I mean? kids going to know Ludacris for Fast and the Furious or being chicken. No, uh, it's definitely going to be Fast and Furious. <laughs> but look, some people like, my kids didn't even know Will Smith made music. <laughs> like, they just like, he's Will Smith. So I wonder, like, when you're talking about artists like Cassidy, Luda, Jada, these are artists that are not really... Punchliners. Yeah, like punchliners. Um, or what, even just mainstream, just mainstream to where their music will live on forever. You actually doing your your uh, your artistry on based on them? Does it matter about the hits, or are you really just doing it for the love of the music? I do it for the love of the music. You know, I uh, I grew up listening to them. I, I do, I'm a punchline rapper myself, but um, you know, like I I just like their music. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's just I like their music. I, I I'm not I don't try to rap like them or nothing like that. But I just like their music. It inspired me when I was coming up. You know right. what I'm saying? That's what I used to generally jam and listen to. You know what I'm saying? Kind of inspired me to rap though. 
Right, right, exactly. All right, we're gonna take a brief pause. We're gonna do a quick mix with DJ Anthrax, and then when we come back, we got more for Smurfzilla. It's Catch Twenty Two, Man Cave yeah. style. Um, bro, I love our, our off air conversations, bro. I just wish that you know. Well, no, I don't. I don't oh. wish that they can hear them because. You know, uh, Raymond says a lot of un uneducated things off That's edge. not true. That's, <laughs> untrue. That's the most untrue thing. I say some wild stuff, but they're never uneducated. Uh, I think you just say big words in the process of making you it feel like You don't know the words. Educated. That doesn't mean that I don't know the words. You don't know the words. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, we back with Spurs Little. Um, so, we were talking about, like, I guess rappers and your favorite rappers. Right. Um, is there anybody that you would say that... Um, you look to like when you are like because i know you say you have your favorite artists that you that you jam right mm -hmm. but is there anybody like when you're in a time or place where you're not really like social but you just like i just want to listen to this artist this artist gets me to a place of comfort hmm. zero me too bro zero, me too. so why would you say zero because zero be on that like it's just me uh, F the world. <laughs> Nobody hey. loves me like I love myself. Hey, the older I get, the more I understand Zero. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's really like that. I used to say the same thing. I used to, man, why Zero don't shake people's hands? And, you know, why Zero always tell me I'm one deep and then I'm doing this and then you, your gals start tripping, your partners start turning on you, they start doing fake stuff, then you go listen to Zero because that's what, that's what telling you all about it. Like, the man really like a preacher or something. For sure. <laughs> so would you I say, did. like, that's your favorite Houston artist or uh, do you have Lil, another? Flip my favorite Houston artist. Wait, who? Flip How? Look, 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 look. The reason why T.I. is my favorite artist is because Lil Flip was my favorite artist. No, I want to hear why. But we got the same story. And then he got beat. <laughs> That's the so same I story. Up. That's the same story, man. Shout out to Flip, man. He on my, uh, my new single, man. man. <laughs> I just like Lil Flip as a person. And I, that's really the only CD I ever bought, man, was the Leprechaun when I was in the Leprechaun school. was hard. Yeah, it was hard. That's like that, your partner get beat up and you rock with the I mean, like Leprechaun, yeah. I like uh, Underground, Underground Legend, Legend was, was hard. It was hard. Uh, he had a lot of singles in the city. Like, he was. He was Game cool. Over was one of the biggest. It was one of the hardest. I did. Game I just, over. This is the way we ball. Yeah. I can do that. Sunshine. Well, Sunshine. Uh, Sunshine, don't Sunshine. do that. Sunshine. Don't like do that. Sunshine. No, no. Look, that was the way I messed him up. I would rather him drop charges and boxes before he Sunshine. drops Sunshine. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was. It so, was how dope. you end up meeting Flip? Uh, man, when I was doing that challenge, I was doing the uh, the, the challenge was called the New Royal Challenge, and um, like it was like I was going against Trilly Pope, and it was probably about like nine o'clock, and I was down like fifty one to forty nine percent, and Lil Flip posted my video at one, mm. and and, I, and I, you know ever since then, you know I just appreciated him, you know what I'm saying, because that put twenty five hundred dollars in my pocket. Yeah. So and then the, the rest of the challenges, the rest of the way, man, he posted the rest of me. He really just showed me love. Invited me to come over to the studio. Uh, actually, I have met him before that because I had won a contest that he was holding. Then I had, you know, when I went to jail or whatever. And when I came home, the same song that he wanted to get on, he actually got on it. Like, mm. and he hit me up about getting on it. And it was a lot to do. Like, That's real. Appreciated that, dog. That's real. So, do you do you feel like like in Houston, you need that stamp of approval from a from a legend before like you can really like grow in the city, or do you feel like people can grow without without that stamp of approval? Uh, you can grow and you can do it without it, but I mean, it's best to have it. I mean, it's called paying homage. I mean, I personally feel like I should give any artists that come uh, uh, well, at first, you know, in the beginning, give them a chance, you know, because you got to pay homage now. They're ass I mean, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. If they, if, you know, if they ignorant with me, I'll be ignorant with them, but like, yeah, I think that you should, like anybody should. I have artists that's coming from where I come from that, that pay me homage and I ain't even made it yet, you know, so it's like I have to do that, like if I'm trying to be a leader of my community so speaking of that we, you know we we you know everybody's been on this this nipsey vibe of, of of building up the community and um how do you feel how do we reach back to our community without um hurting ourselves because i mean the same aspect he was in his community he built his community up but it's the same community that took him from us so how do we in turn like still give our community what, what they need without it okay. hindering us? Well, uh, that's a good question, first of all, bro. And um, I don't really think it's a way of doing it. I think it's just a chance that you take 
You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's all about the reason you're doing it for. Like, I didn't even know that Nipsey was doing all that stuff until he passed away. Mm. And it's crazy, but the man was a good man, you know, all the way around the board. So he just basically sacrificed himself to make sure that we know and understand what's really going on in this world. He liked it. That's going to be the Tupac for the kids right now. I think, right. Like, like they're going to look at Nipsey like we look at Tupac. And, you know, just listening to what he's doing and uh, knowing what the stuff I was trying to do, you know, it was kind of similar. It was just on a smaller scale. So it was like, you know, gave me some, you know, ideas to keep on pushing. But I ain't going to lie, it affected me. It let me know anybody can get killed. Yeah, for sure. Anybody can get touched. So, like so, 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 being that, do you? So, cause I, I said during during his during his demise, man, um, I think that he was so of a regular person that he didn't understand his celebrity. Right. Um, do you feel like that once you become on a certain certain plateau that you should move a different way, or do you just accept like what God has planned for you? I think that you should move a certain way. Because that's who God gives you the answers in order to move that certain way. Uh, because, you know, you know, and I understand what you're saying about that because, you know, you have to know who you are and what you are. So, some situations you just can't put yourself in, no matter if it's for the hood or for your homeboys or whatever it is. You know, it's, type, it's like a hit and miss type thing. You got to pull up and burn off and just pray in the process, you know. But, like, as an artist, I would not go. I, I'll go back to my neighborhood forever, but it won't be like I would have before that man passed away. You know, it, it's even like that right now. Like, I, I, I'm going to stop at the store for five, ten minutes, shake hands, and I'm gone because you don't know who's watching. You never right. get nobody a chance to make a phone call. Mm. That's, that's 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 big, man. Um, so, let me ask you a question. So, how how do you end up taking this to the next level? Like the way you are now, how do you feel like you can take it nationwide? What's the plan or, or the goal? My plan is just to keep on doing. Like I do community service. I do uh, I do community cleanups. And, uh, you know, it's just about, it's about doing everything. You gotta do everything. You can't just rap. You know, I got my own artists. You know, I got my managers, but I got my own artists. You know, it just, you have to, I got my own clothing line. You gotta sell clothes, man. You gotta get the posters. You gotta get back out here with the old school CDs because there's some people that still got radio from CD players. You gotta network, you gotta go, you gotta travel, you gotta do it all in order to make it. Yeah. I'm with that. Um. So we gonna go uh, wrap it on up, man. Um, I appreciate it, man. You gave gave some nuggets, man. Uh, oh, so is there? Uh, can you tell the people where they can find you on social media? Oh, uh, social media, man. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. It's Smurfzilla. It's S M U R P H Z I L L A B A N G B A N G. That's the insta. That's the Instagram name, and uh, the Facebook is just Smurfzilla. Uh, my last two singles are on all platforms: Spotify. Uh, Google Play, Apple Music, uh, my old mixtape is on that pill. And yeah, just check me out, man. Y'all go hear what I got to say. I like it, I like it, I like it. Man. Dope. All right, so we're going to go into a quick mix with uh, DJ Lacefront, Beard. And uh, when we come back, <laughs> we're going to talk uh, a little man cave talk because uh, it is man cave Sunday. I'm ready and uh, women might be a little offended, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Catch 22 Radio, man cave style. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the you South. Can get the Catch like 22 the Radio and Show on 92 Kells. I bought a new bag, I had to watch so watch your tone. Taking these drugs, I'm going to be up until the morning. Then it's your car, you just a Lisa, you just... Hey, what it is, H Time in the Smurfs. I like just did a dope interview with Kiss 22, man. Y'all make sure y'all get down here for y'all interviews. Make sure y'all check me out, man, on all platforms. I just dropped that Michael Myers and that Boss Man meeting, man. Video shoot for Boss Man meeting this Friday. Come suit the booters, business and time. Make sure y'all be there. Bang ain't no minute, man. Hey!